hello everyone uh, today i'm going to speak on the topic dynamic programming in that topic i'm going to see Borchel's algorithm subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the latest updates so first we'll see what is Borchel's algorithm Borchel's algorithm is used to compute a transitive closure please remember this term very important transitive closure for a directed graph so Borchel's algorithm mostly can be used for directed sometimes it can be used for undirected graphs also but Borchel's algorithm uh, can be used for unweighted graph so first thing is uh, this is a human visible graph where I can re I can read this graph saying that there are four vertices in this and A is connected to B B is connected to D, D is connected to C and D is connected to A like this but how will a computer read this so for this I have to go and understand adjacency matrix so first we'll convert this graph into computer readable format called as adjacency matrix so first we'll understand what is adjacency matrix adjacency matrix is the n by n matrix where n is the number of vertices so if I am having four vertices then my rows and the columns will be the name of the vertices so I have made four by four matrix so in this four by four matrix I'll be uh, representing this matrix in the form of zero and ones as this is unweighted graph so if there is a connection then I'll be if there is an uh, edge between A to B then I will represent that as one if there is no edge between uh, any any vertex then that will be represented as zero so first initially we'll understand a loop so if if we are having a self loop suppose for this A if I'm having a path from A to A such is called as a self loop so as we can see that in in this graph there is no self loop so all the vertex vertices a to a b to b c to c and d to d will be zero so first initially i will represent them with the, the diagonal elements that is a to a is zero b to b is zero c to c is zero d to d is zero this zero represents that I am not having any self loop okay so next procedure is there a path from A to B yes there is a path from A to B so I will represent this as one is there a path from A to C there is no path so this is represented as zero is there a path from A to D there is a path from D to A but there is no direction from A to D directly it might go intermediate A to B B to D but I am not right now bothered with the intermediate nodes I am only concerned with the direct A to D so A to D becomes 1 sorry 0 then next I am going to see with respect to B node B vertex B vertex is B connected to A no there is no path from A to B so this is 0 B, B to C is there a path no 0 B to D there is a path so I will represent this as 1 so C to A is there a link from C to A vertex no so this is 0 C to B this is also 0 C to C we have already seen C to D is there a link from C to D no so this is 0 again so now with vertex D is there a link from D to A yes there is a path so that becomes 1 d to b there is no path so this becomes 0 d to c there is a path so this is 1 d to d there is no self loop so we have represented this as 0 so first step in doing Warshall's algorithm is to convert an graph into an adjacency matrix so first step is done after this step we have to understand the procedure of doing this Warshall, solving Warshall's algorithm so for understanding the procedure of the Warshall's algorithm we have to select one row and one column in the adjacency matrix suppose I have selected one row and one column and in that I am having one in the selected portion in the uh, row and one is uh, in the column so where that e where that will be intersected suppose uh, in in this problem 
I am having one in jth uh, position and one in ith position this so there is one in kj and one in ik so where this gets intersected where the lines get intersected suppose i am drawing an imaginary line like this so where this line gets intersected it in gets intersected somewhere here and see the uh, see the value of that if it is 1 then no changes will happen if it is 0 then 0 means that there is no connection so 0 now can be changed to 1 got this so this is the procedure for doing solving the Warshall's algorithm so whatever the matrix we are getting it is called as the resultant matrix so initially the resultant matrix is k r, r, r raised to k minus 1 that is first step this is the first step so whatever the resultant matrix after solving this kind of an problem we are getting is r raised to k So we have seen how to draw the adjacency, how to plot the adjacency matrix. So we'll be solving this uh, this uh, Warshall's algorithm for using this graph. So first, initially, we are solving this using uh, th for the uh, resultant matrix R0. So R0 is now having the adjacency matrix, initial adjacency matrix, where I have selected the first column and the first row so here I am drawing this th the first row and the first column so after after doing this so first row and first column has been selected uh, so uh, when once I do this so for simplicity I have highlighted the first row and the first column now what we have to see is where is the one value one in the selected row and column so I am having the value one over here and I am having the value one over here in this row and column so one is available in A B and one is available as D A so D A is one A B is one so now if I go am going to draw an imaginary line which is going to intersect both of them so this I am drawing an imaginary line so this both of the imaginary lines are going to intersect at this position and we can see at this position there is the value 0 so the value 0 is here at the imaginary line intersection so this value 0 will become value 1 in the resultant matrix so once I do this I convert the value 0 into value 1 that will be taken as an input as R1 so in in R1 you can see that the same adjacent uh, same uh, resultant matrix have been continued as R1 and in this R1 you have to change for the next row and the next column so here I am going to choose the next row and the next column so once I choose the next row and the next column once I make the decision to I am going to highlight this uh, so second row and the second column has been highlighted and after highlighting uh, please check out where is 1 in the selected portion 1 is at B A sorry A B A B uh, 1 is at uh, B D and one is at db so i have one at these three positions so now i am going to draw an imaginary lines between the selected row and the column so that they intersect somewhere and that imaginary that intersection will be converted uh, so i am going to draw the imaginary line from here so i draw drive the imaginary line from here and this position so once i am going to draw an imaginary line and find the point of intersection so uh, so the point of intersection is somewhere here so uh, after sir, making the point of intersection so i got the value zero here at the intersection point so this zero now becomes one okay 
so again I'm going to draw the next imaginary line from this position so I am going to draw the imaginary line here and here so this is again a zero so this position becomes one so any other points left where I can continue with the drawing the imaginary lines no so I have got one here and this positions so I have to convert this and whatever the resultant matrix I get this will become the resultant matrix R2 so I am going to take this R2 here and continue with the next procedure so for the next image uh, next uh, uh, so for the next resultant matrix I have to choose again the row and the column so now uh, in the in this resultant matrix R2 I have to choose the third row and the third column so I'm s highlighting the third row and the third column so I have highlighted the third row and the third column so in this third row and third column I have to again check whether do I have any ones in the selected one so I have one in DC so I have one in DC but the problem is I do not have any one in the row section so all row sections are zeros but in column section I have only one so I cannot make an imaginary line because there is no one in the row section so this resultant matrix will again continue uh, without making any impact to the selected resultant matrix and that will become an input to R3 so in R3 again I am going to make the new row and the new column so I am going to highlight the new row and the new column this will be fourth row and the fourth column so in this fourth row and fourth column please find out again where all ones are present so I have one in DA so in this position I have one in DB so in this position I have one in DC so at this position I have one in AD so AD in columns BD in columns again so these are ones available so I have to draw the imaginary lines from these ones so I'm going to draw the imaginary line so if I draw the imaginary line which goes from here and uh, the column section so this is going to intersect at a comma a so a comma a becomes one so next again I'll clean out this for simplicity okay so next I am going to draw the imaginary line from DB and it goes on producing an imaginary line and AD is going to produce an imaginary line and the point of intersection is AB so AB is changed to 1 it was previously 1 and now even though uh, the 1 didn't make any impact and it continued to be 1 okay so again next I am going to uh, clean this and draw the new imaginary line the imaginary line which goes from DC in the straight pattern and AD so this imaginary line is going to intersect at the point AC AC is 0 now AC will become 1 done so after doing this th this procedure goes on repeating uh, again for the next uh, sets okay so uh, again I have to draw the imaginary line from DA so I am going to draw the imaginary from DA and in the column section I have to draw the imaginary line from BD so if I draw the imaginary from from BD here the point of intersection is BA BA is 0 BA now becomes 1 so next again I'm going to draw the imaginary from from DB DB is imaginary line is drawn and again uh, BD is having an imaginary line and the point of intersection is uh, uh, BB BB was 0 now BB became 1 done so again I'm going to draw a new line imaginary on uh, DC so DC is drawn and the point of intersection is BC BC is 0 so BC becomes 1 in the new resultant matrix 
so any any uh, row and column unchecked so we have done with all of them so all of the point of intersections have been checked and we got a new resultant matrix so this resultant matrix will become the solution for the next one so we are taking this as resultant matrix 4 so r4 is the resultant matrix we got so in this r4 we have already produced the sorry checked uh, with uh, four rows and four columns already there are only four vertices hence there will be the check for the four row and the fourth column so after this we don't have any any uh, row and the column to be visited yet so this r4 becomes the final uh, answer for Warshall's algorithm the whatever the resultant matrix we got r4 is called as the transitive closure what is this transitive closure means this transitive closure will lead us to the solution that is whether a is reachable to any other vertices that means see from this we can read that a to a is reachable yes a to a even though there is no self loop a to a is reachable please see the point, uh, 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 pointer so a can be uh, visited from a to b b to b and b to a that means a to a is reachable then then a to b is already reachable from uh, this uh, is clearly visible no need of explaining this a to c is a to c reachable yes a to, a to b b to d b to c yes a to c is also reachable is a to d reachable a to d is also reachable a to d a to b b to d yes all the vertices from a is reachable similarly can i reach all the vertices from b so i'll take this so from b can i go to a yes so how what is the part it is it can be b to d b to a so this is b to a is reachable so this transitive closure is going to answer us whether all the vertices are reachable by and by seeing this just by seeing this from b i can visit a b c and d from c but only thing is from this uh, transitive closure matrix we are going to see that c is the only vertex which cannot visit see, from c i cannot visit a from c i cannot visit b from c i cannot visit c from c i cannot visit d and it is very much evident from the graph that c is an vertex which has only incoming edges and there are no outgoing images so from c i cannot visit any of the other vertices but from this again it is evident that d can be vis can visit all the vertices so this transitive closure by using Warshall's algorithm we can see that whether all the vertices can reach all other vertices so this is about Warshall's algorithm thank you